Well, I, I volunteered for Swift Boats um, when I saw what they when they were training in uh, in San Diego, and I was on Oklahoma City, and they were we were running uh, training exercises, and a group of boats attacked us and sank us real quickly, and they were moving pretty fast. So I was interested in it, so I volunteered and um, went to um, Phong Tao, Cat Low, Vietnam. Um, I had the privilege of working on two boats with fantastic crews. Um, once in a while, every when I first got in country, uh, when you were gone on patrol for a lengthy period of time, uh, if you were gone for three or four weeks, you would come back and maybe have a day of rest. And if you if you were scheduled to go out, if you were lucky, you might be able to do a, a, a little patrol of Bung Tao Harbor as a kind of an R&R &R thing. It, nothing really happened out there usually, but uh, just, just to keep people busy. We were all out one day, and we were just floating around outside of Bung Tao Harbor, and uh, it was really hot, the water was very calm, there were six of us on the boat, of course, and we, four or five of us jumped off, and, and we were swimming and having a good time, and I think the water was really deep out there, and I was thinking, you know, somebody, when I first got in country, when I first got to Cat Low, somebody told me about a story about a big white shark that would come into Long Town Harbor, and you know how those things just strike you at the minute you think, of, what am I doing here? Is this a good idea? So I'm looking at the only person on the boat who was doing a lot of watching this, and I looked around and I see this great big fin about three blocks away. And I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, and so I'm yelling, I said, the shark, everybody gets up, everybody gets back, crawls back on the boat, and we watch this big shark come right at us. It came right straight, right straight at us because white sharks don't have any natural enemies. And he was going to eat the boat. <laughs> so we're all on deck watching this, and he comes up. And the freeboard on the on the middle of the boat, on the front of the boat, is not very high. In other words, the, the the distance from the water to the to the deck. The shark came up and swam right to us, and actually raised up and put his chin on the edge of the deck. And you could see into his mouth if it was like this. I, I, we were so dumbfounded, we didn't know what to do. We had cameras and everything, but everybody was looking at this and we were thinking, what is going on here? And we could not, nobody had the forethought of getting a, getting a camera to take a picture. Well, you know, white sharks aren't good, so we thought, well, maybe we'll see if we can get him. So I grabbed a couple of concussion grenades and he's, he's moved back on, on uh, back off the boat and was alongside and I threw two concussion grenades over him. And both of them blew up very close to him and he stiffened out. You can see him, he's only about 10 feet underwater, maybe 10, 15 feet underwater. And he stiffened out and I swear, <laughs> You swear he was almost as long as a boat. He was probably 30, 35 feet at least. So we thought, well, we thought we got rid of him and it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, endanger anybody else swimming out there or any other crews that were, that were relaxing. And it sank. Uh, and about a half hour later, there was that big fin up there circling around again. So, uh, we had, there were so many unusual events over there, uh, I always like to remember the good ones or the unusual ones. We were coming down, we ran the rivers, we never had a patrol out on the coast, we always ran the rivers. And uh, we were coming down, but we, tr we transversed the coast to get to the rivers quicker. We uh, were coming down, uh, going south of the coast, and, and I picked up on a radar um, it looked like a tidal wave. Uh, you used to come down at the river mouths, the, the sandbars would change, and when the tide was low, uh, you could tell, you could pick them up on radar. Uh, 
you could pick up the sandbars and you could avoid them. Well, this was something completely different. So we get, we get, it was really long and it was high because I could pick it up for quite some, some time. And so we were headed right towards it and we got about a mile from it and I, we saw what it was. It, I've never seen anything like it. It was just a churning, bubbling water, maybe four feet tall. And it was right at the river mouth, and the only thing I could think of is maybe it was low tide, warm water coming out of the delta with a cross cold riptide or something. But we drove up to it, and it was just like a wall of water, maybe four feet, maybe four feet high. We, had, we ended up going around it, but it was a really unusual uh, sight to see. Uh, I guess the uh, my experience in Vietnam was, um, I have absolutely no regrets. I served with the, some of the best people I've ever known in my life. Um, we had good times, we had bad times. Um, 